Hello, Miss Rogers here. Today we're going to do a lesson with the equivalent fractions, okay? But before we jump into what an equivalent fraction is, let's do a review on what a fraction is or like what a fraction wants you to know, okay? So all that a fraction is, and I'm going to put it up here on my board, a fraction is just a way to show you or a way to represent part of a whole, okay? So you're not using the whole thing, you're only using parts of it, okay? So if I was to give you the example two-thirds, okay, my numerator is my part, so that's the part being used, okay? And then my denominator is my whole, like all together, okay? And I will put that up. Then my numerator, I'm just going to put being used. Okay? So if I was to represent two-thirds using a picture, okay? So my two is my part that I'm using, and my three is my whole. So I'm going to split my object into three parts because three is my whole that I'm using, okay? The two comes into play because I'm using two parts of that. Okay, so I could say I had a cookie and I split that cookie into three sections for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And at the end of the day, I only used two parts of that cookie. So I only ate that part of the cookie for breakfast and lunch. Okay, so what I mean by equivalent fractions now is an equivalent fraction is just a way to show you that you're taking your original fraction and coming up with a fraction that is equal to that. Okay, but equivalent fractions use a different set of numbers compared to your original fractions. But each set of numbers, so your original fraction and your equivalent fraction, when you simplify your equivalent fraction, will equal your original fraction. So if I want to take two thirds and I want to make a equivalent fraction of that, you need to know how to make an equivalent fraction. So the way to make an equivalent fraction is being able to multiply any set of whole number, being able to multiply that by your numerator and denominator. All right, so I like to keep things as simple as possible. So when I try to come up with equivalent fractions, I like to try to multiply fractions by either two or three to keep them nice and simple because the bigger your fraction is and the more higher the number you multiply it by, the bigger the fraction. And then it gets tricky, okay? So I like to multiply my fractions by either two or three to come up with equivalent fractions. So I'm going to multiply my fraction two thirds by two, okay? So if I was to multiply my numerator and denominator by two, I would get 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, now what I mean by equivalent fractions, now this 2 thirds is, is going to have to be shown that it's equal to this 4 6. So if I was to draw these out, okay, so I'm going to put two set of boxes down here, and my top is going to represent 2 thirds. My bottom is going to represent 4 6. Okay, my top fraction, I'm going to cut it into 3 because 3 is my whole. Okay, my bottom fraction, I'm going to cut into 6 pieces because 6 is my whole. Okay, so I'm just cutting it into 6 equal pieces. So if you look here at my top, I have 1, 2, 3 whole pieces. Okay. Then at my bottom, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, what this shows is I'm going to have to show that when I use two of my three pieces and four of my six pieces, that it's going to be equal. So if I come up here to my two thirds and I fill it in, that's what two thirds look like. Okay. Now, if I come down here and I fill in my four six that I'm using four pieces, it should be showing that it's equal to two thirds. So I have one, two, three, four. These fractions are equivalent because when I draw them with a picture, they both 
show that they're being used in the same amount. Okay, that I'm using the same amount of each fraction. The only difference is my 4 6 is using different numbers than my 2 thirds. But if I was to simplify this, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Oh, looky there. Now I got the same amount of fraction pieces. Okay, so if I take that and I use that with a recipe, all right, so I love anything that has to do with cooking, okay? Baking being my favorite thing, and I love cookies. So I took a recipe that I found on Food Network, okay? And I'm only going to use a like, couple recipe pieces, like a couple ingredients. I'm not using the whole recipe. So on Food Network, I found this chocolate chip cookie recipe that calls for one half cup flour and one fourth cup of chocolate chips. Again. I didn't use the whole recipe, I'm only using a few ingredients, just so you all can understand how to relate equivalent fractions to a real life scenario of using recipes, okay? So if I look at my recipe up here, again, it calls for one half cup of flour and one fourth cup of chocolate chips, and I want to make equivalent fractions with one half and one fourth, I'm going to do the same thing that I just showed you all on the little whiteboard, okay? So I'm going to multiply a specific whole number, a whole number I come up with, by my numerator and denominator. So if I have one half up here, okay, and again, I like to multiply things by the least amount of work possible. So I'm going to multiply by two first, okay? So I'm going to multiply my numerator and denominator by two, okay? 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 4, or 2 times 2 is 4, okay? So, 1 half is, is equal or equivalent to 2 fourths, okay? I know that because of my work I just shown. But if I was to draw a model, okay, again, I'm going to draw two boxes that are the same amount. My top box is going to show 1 half. My bottom box is going to show two fourths. Okay, so my top box that represents one half, I'm going to split it into two pieces because two is my whole. Okay, and I just used one piece. Okay, my bottom fraction, I'm cutting it into fourths because four is my whole. Okay, and in this, I only used two pieces. Okay, so in my model, you can see that one half and two fourths are equivalent because it uses the same amount. The only difference is two fourths is using different numbers than one half to represent the equivalent fractions. Okay, so if I look at my second ingredient, one fourth cup of chocolate chips, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up with an equivalent fraction. Okay. But this time, instead of just coming up with one equivalent fraction, I'm going to come up with two equivalent fractions to show you a different way to do this. So, I'm going to bring one-fourth out to the right, okay? I'm going to multiply it by two first to get one set of equivalent fractions, okay? So, if I multiply my numerator and denominator by two, I get one times two is two, four times two is eight. But since I want to come up with two equivalent fractions, I'm going to take my one-fourth and multiply it by a different whole number, okay? And like I said in the beginning, I like to keep things simple. So I multiplied my first one-fourth by two. This time I'm going to multiply by three. So I'm multiplying my numerator and denominator by three, okay? So one times three is three. Four times three is 12, okay? So that means one fourth is equal to two eighths, which is equal to three twelfths. Because if I were to simplify this two eighths and three twelfths, it would equal one fourth. Okay? But I'm only going to use one fourth and two eighths to show you in a model. Okay? So I'm not going to worry about the three twelfths. I just wanted to show you all how you use or how you get another equivalent fraction. So in this case, I wanted to show you three equivalent fractions, okay? 
Now, I'm just going to use 1 fourth and 2 eighths to represent it in my model to show you that they're equivalent. Okay, so my top one is going to be 1 fourth. I'm going to cut that into four pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4. I only used 1 fourth of it. Okay, my bottom one is going to be 2 eighths. I'm going to cut them into eight pieces because I have eight whole pieces. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I only use two pieces. Okay? So this shows you that one fourth and two eighths are two eighths are equivalent because they use the same amount represented in our model. Okay? And if I was to draw another set of boxes that represent three twelves, it would be the same. I'm not going to do that because that would be a lot of work because my lines might not be even. Okay, I hope this video helped you guys on how to make equivalent fractions based on a recipe. Until next time, see you later.